All right, welcome everyone. I just wanted to do a real quick video talking about the moon and how the moon affects us. And I've had a lot of clients over the years really address uh, this issue with they've had with the moon feeling like a full moon really kind of throws them off energetically, even mentally and emotionally. And so I've been feeling this question for a long time and I have some really cool uh, things today that I can share with you. But I also now am not alone in this beautiful uh, space because uh, my dear friend and client, Chris McLaughlin, is now doing some really cool work with moon energy. She actually teaches some classes and on, on moon energy, how you can utilize it to empower yourself because it is something that's meant to be empowering. And, and so I wanted to just have her on real quick to share some of the things she's seen or some of the ways she can, uh, she has worked with people on, and even herself on this moon energy and the empowerment uh, that we can find through the moon. So Chris, uh, welcome. Talk to us a little bit about just kind of the classes in real quick and what, what you're doing or what you're seeing that's helping people empower themselves through the moon. Absolutely. Thanks, Al, so much. Um, yeah, this came to me uh, during COVID, and it's been such a wonderful thing to share. Um, when you work with the moon, it really helps you connect to yourself, and it becomes a guide um, that is there every night. Um, and when you start learning about the phases of the moon and what their purpose is and how you can use that energy and harness it to apply it to the things you're working on in your life, um, and start flowing with the energies of the moon, it becomes a, a, a journey of not only self-discovery, but self-empowerment. And then there's a support of the moon the whole time for you while you're doing the work. Yeah, so essentially the moon is almost like a, a check-in point, just like many other things could be a check-in point. Mm -hmm. And Absolutely. then you're just really working in the different phases, checking in with yourself during those phases. Where does the moon become kind of more uh, more like how do you get messages from that space mm, great question so the first year i did this i really just for myself uh, on my own focused on the new and the full moon and i'd even forget sometimes like it takes a while to get into the rhythm of something new and um once i started sharing the information and teaching um about moon energy and started the course master the moon for people i've had to get way more connected to the moon as to be able to share the energies because it changes uh, zodiac signs every two and a half days and phases, you know, every four or five days or so. So if you're working with that information, it required me to get much more connected. And through that consistency of, of channeling and, and connecting to the moon and working with my own um, self journey with the moon in those energies, uh, I've started to just receive information when I do that work from the moon. That's really cool. I, I do want to talk about the zodiac sign, the phases. Again, there's all kinds of ways we get to work in this world and figure ourselves out and empower ourselves. There's some real data, scientific data, about the moon and its alignments and how much energy it's putting off. There's very much uh, throughout the thousands of years how stars align and, and energy aligns and even zodiac signs. And there's some pretty good consistency. And let's be honest, a lot of us will look at our zodiac signs or some of those things. What it really means to me, and I'm curious what your thoughts are on this, is it's, it's not that it's this end-all, be-all. It's not that it's just all the answers, but if we're going to play in this world and we're going to work on ourselves, why not use some of this cool, fun data, not as a make or break, not as life or death, but just good opportunity to seek reflection in self, to be open and to be mindful. Is that really the approach you're taking? Absolutely. Cool. The beautiful thing about the moon and moon energy that I haven't found exists in many other guides, if you will, that you could choose to work with, um, you know, in human form or whatever form that is, um, is it really has a true balance of intentional action and rest and reflection. Uh, that's really beautiful and, and brilliant, actually, like just allowing yourself to do stuff and then also take time to let things happen. Is that really what you're saying? So your classes then, they basically walk people through this process of learning how to use the moon as a coach. Yes, it's three months, you get all the basics, and then we do three cycles of the moon together, three full cycles, so that you, you know, with me, so as a guide. Um, but the intention is that after three months, you can go out and for the rest of your life, have this as a support and a tool. Yeah. So here's something that I would say to anybody, and this is where we get into some, some juice for today, because we're going to quickly end this, because 
it's not so much that this is, hey, go take Chris's classes, although I think you should because she's amazing and a magical soul and she's really doing some great work to, to show people. So anyone interested in doing some self-work and having it, in, you know, working in this way, that she, she's a great outlet for that. But more than that, let's continue to let the world, the environment, things like the moon, the ocean, the water, the forest, the trees, Let's keep working and letting this outside experience assist us in being a reflection of the ways that we can work. And certainly moon energy can do that. So if that's something you're interested in, that's an outlet. But more than that, here's the thing I would tell anyone. And this answers the question today, which is, can the moon affect you? And what's it really mean? And so I get this call where like, hey, I feel like the moon's throwing me off. And, and the answer can be very real. And yes, if you're feeling that, it's not necessarily uh, something that is made up in your head, but it's also not an excuse. My personal view when it comes to moon energy is that it is there to be a reference point. If we don't rise up to meet that energy, if we don't rise up to, to that kind of mindset construct that we're bigger than, than just this tiny little thing that we feel like we are, we're gonna be in a little bit of uh, emotional uh, instability. And so when the moon is full and it's powered and it's supercharged and you're feeling like it's throwing you off, it's because you haven't risen up to meet it where it's at. And that's anything in life. It's really important for you to rise up and meet the moon where it's at and get big in your breath and get big in your mind and get big in your energy. Uh, Chris, kind of with, with that in mind, I know you believe in that because we've talked about it many times, but what else is there for that specific thing on a full moon? Yeah, so if you're if you're only getting caught when the moon gets your attention, the energy of the moon gets bigger than you. Um, what happens when you start working with the moon energy consistently is that you you start flowing with it. Um, and there are full moons that are more powerful and less powerful. There are new moons that are more powerful and less powerful just because the way the energies line up out in the universe and other factors. And so. What I've found is when you're working with the energy consistently, you tend to be a kind of one step ahead in a way because you're in flow. So even though you'll still feel that big full moon energy, it's not something that'll take you off course, it's something that you're working with. Yeah, and that's exactly, we said the same thing in different ways and that's yeah. exactly it. So some, some will land with what I said, some will land with what you said, or oh, both will make sense. But yes, if you are ahead, and working with the moon you'll feel like you're a step ahead and it won't throw you off it'll only rise you up that's just an amazing thing and listen the moon is real it's not something we is made up the energy of the moon is very real it's literally what makes our oceans and the high tide low tide that there's a big magnetic energy in the, in, in the moon so this isn't something to just be oh woo woo or foo foo this is something that we're using to do real empowerment work you're doing that with your classes. I do it just mainly when people ask for it. I don't do it specifically, but if people are asking me questions about the moon, that's what I give them. But again, I'm so happy to be able to throw them your way now. Send them to me. Yeah, so, um, but just wanted to give a little tidbit today for everyone who is just looking for new ways to play, grow, empower themselves, and new information and new awarenesses is you might be affected by the full moon and not even realize it. So. If you have any more questions, you can definitely reach out to me uh, through Instagram, Facebook, uh, go to my website, alquintus.com. There's an email on there uh, in the contact page, or you can fill out the form either way. Chris, how can they get a hold of you? I know you have a, a full moon Instagram page, right? The Instagram page is Master the Moon. Okay. The uh, website's masterthemoon.com. Cool. Uh, awesome. Well, thank you so much, everyone. Thank you, Chris. I thank appreciate you. it. And yeah, I'm excited to continue to play in this world. And um, I've done a lot of mooning, but this is a different kind of working with the moon. Different work. <laughs> All right.